All right, we'll be working on figure 564, which is a shaft support. And we're also gonna look at how to insert a C bore. All right, so 564, if you take a look at the image, um, we've got uh, two C bores to insert when we have a curved surface that we have to put in. So as I look at um, best application to put this in, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the front view. All right, so I'll create a sketch. And I've got my three planes to work from, and this is my front and back. Click on that. Again, we've got our zero, zero, so I'll build mine out from right there. And my part is uh, seven inches across. So I can take that and just type in seven. And then move my dimension down out of the way. And just keep working my way around up. And the thickness is 1.12. I have a curved surface here on the, the left-hand side. So we need to think about how to build that in. It has a radius of 1.62. All right, so 1.62. And the center of that is up three inches. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna insert a point here. I'll go to sketch and go to point. I'm just going to put a point somewhere over here, right? and I can dimension it in in a second. All right, I'll go ahead and do sketch, sketch dimension. From here to the outside edge is 1.62, because that's my radius. And then again, sketch, sketch dimension to the bottom. This needs to go up three inches. So that's where the center of my arc is, all right? So now what I could do is I could draw a line here. It goes up to that point. And now I can draw my arc that goes over. Okay, so sketch, arc. I like center arc the best. Click, go out to here. Then how far around do you want it to go? Well, we'd like ours to go 180 degrees. Hit enter. Got a nice arc there. And now I can just continue to draw. Now, if I go down, I could keep going down, 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 and just pick some random point and trim. Or if I bring my mouse over here, don't click, but just hover over that spot. And if I come back, it will give me a blue construction line, which is very helpful. Go across. And my part is shaded in now, so it's all set. We have a C board that has to go here, but I'm going to use the insert hole to place the seabore. So for right now, my part's all done. Looks pretty good. So I'll say stop sketch. I'll hit the house button. And we still have this two dimensional shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the extrude button. And again, I can go forward and backward. You can also, instead of one sided, you could go two sides or symmetrical. There's lots of options you can try out. And my part is 3.00. Looks like that didn't go the way I wanted to. So down here at the bottom, I have a sketch and I have an extrude and my extrusion didn't work right. So I'm gonna right click, edit feature, and it's two. So I can either do negative 3.00 because that was the direction I started dragging in, or you could be a positive three and it would just go the other direction. Okay, looks good. Zoom out here a little bit, looking pretty good. The last two pieces, I need to put a C bore here and a C bore in here. And a, a C bore or a counter bore is a series of two cosentric holes. One goes down a little bit and the other one goes the rest of the way through the part. And it allows me to put bushings, nuts, bolts, things like that inside there. Okay. So you can insert a C bore, right? We got to look under our tabs here, depending on the version you have. Create hole. All right, it might be under modify, uh, but for my version, it's create hole. And I want to select where that hole is going to go. So I need to put one here. I need to put one here. So just pick which one you want to do. So we'll do this one first. I click. All right. And I might want to look at the front view maybe to, to see this a little better. It's a little bit, that's helpful. Okay. Now over here, before we start plugging in numbers, hole type is set to simple. 
let's change it to counter bore because that's the type of counter bore we're using or the hole that we're using. Okay. Next thing I might want to do is go ahead and put this in the correct spot, right? It's kind of off center. So over here, it says references. I can do select. If I go down to the bottom, well, it's set to 3.23, but that's not right. It should be three because it's centered in that arc. I want to hit enter. All right, because if you do, it'll finish out your, your drawing. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to go over here to the side. And this should be 1.62 because, again, I want it centered. Again, don't hit enter. It won't, uh, not going to do what you want it to do. All right. Now, over here, it says counter, it says the depth, the diameter, and then it says counter bore depth and counter bore diameter. So if we look at our drawing, all right, we have a couple numbers. I see 1.50 diameter, a 2.00 seabore, and 0.5 deep. So counter bore diameter should be 2.00. In the book, it says that the depth is 0.50, and then the diameter is 1.50. Now, the other interesting thing is right now it says depth. I want that second hole to go all the way through. So instead of distance, I'll do all. I'm going to rotate this around a little bit so we can get a preview of it. And you can see that one hole will go back just a little bit, and then the other one will go all the way through. And we'll say OK. Again, spin this around a little bit. You can see one hole goes through a little bit. The other one goes all the way through. Notice that my C bore is only on the front. There is not a C-bore on the back, just on the front. Okay, again, I could insert a bushing or a bolt, and the head of the bolt or the head of the bushing could be hidden inside there and wouldn't interfere with the rest of the part. Let's put another one in so we get a little more practice here. So for me, it's create, hole, select the surface I want to work on. Now let's select our references. Now the book only gives us one reference. It tells us that to this edge is 1.50. It doesn't give us the other dimension, uh, and it should, but we need that front to back dimension. Because the depth of the part is three, I'm gonna make mine 1.50. Again, don't hit enter, because it'll close out. If you do hit enter, uh-oh, I didn't create the whole seabore. Just down here across the bottom, we were working on the second hole. Oh, I need to be able to edit. There we go, edit feature, and just come back in. Now, if you look, the settings are still the same from the previous Seabor, so that's great. Once you do it once, it will hold on to those dimensions or it'll store it in the little drop down box. So this one looks great, it's already done. So we don't have to type those numbers in because it saved it from the first one. And I say, okay. Looks pretty good. Okay, we're done with our drawing here, okay? And we're ready to move on and put this into a drawing that we can then dimension. Okay, and we also have a very special dimension for our seabore. Okay, the one in the book is an older method, and we're going to do the newer method. So let's put this into a drawing. All right, so first thing I'd want to do is save this. And this is figure 564, so figure 5-64. All right, you could also save it as shaft support if you would like. All right, looks pretty good. And now I want to go ahead and put this into a drawing. So mine says model. Some of yours says design. So model drawing from design. Just keep the defaults. Those look really good. And it sends it over to my drawing. All right, it gives me the base view, a very small base view. It's scaled at one to four. So maybe I'll Take mine up to one to two. You could try one to one. It might be a little bit large. It's a pretty big part. I don't know if I'll get the other views in. So one to two looks good. And again, this is my front view. So I want it somewhere down around here. I need some room to put some dimensions in. So I'll click there and say, okay. I'll go ahead now up here in the top left. There's a projected view button. I'll click on that. And I'll click my top view. Click my right view and click my isometric view and then hit enter. Remember we like, oh, my isometric is a little bit too high. It's kind of touching the border. So I'm gonna bring mine down just a pinch. Looks good. I wanna change the style of that isometric view. So I'll double click 
And over here, there's a shaded button that looks a little bit nicer. So I'll say shaded. And it looks good. Okay. Next thing I need to put in is the center lines and center marks. So I'll start with center mark. So up here, mine says geometry, center mark. Anywhere that there's a circle, click it. I don't need to do it twice because there's already one there. Click it. All right, that's it for center marks. And then let's do the geometry. I need to do the center line. So I click the outside edge of one circle, the outside edge of another. Anywhere that I have circles, I want to put those in. Boom, boom. And here as well. Now we've talked in class a little bit. And if you scroll in, a center line should be a long dash, a short dash, and a long dash. And this one clearly doesn't do that. The one on the side view does. We're going to extend all of our center lines to extend just outside the part. So I'll click on this. I'll grab the arrow and just extend it out a little bit. Right, just to clean it up a little bit. Same thing here. This is not even the correct symbol. So when I drag this up a little bit, good, and down. Try one more time with my top one. Now you see it gives us the correct symbol. So it looks good. So let's go ahead and do that again on this side. And in order to match things up and make things look nice, I'm going to grab my arrow and drag down. I'm going to line it up with the other view just so it makes it look nice and clean. Anybody out there that's following along, if you ever figure out if there's a way we can have these extend out a certain distance, let me know because I'd really like to know. This plus sign is kind of being crunched inside here. So let's extend this out just a bit. And then again, this bottom one, because I want it to be uniform, I'll go down and line it up with this one. That looks pretty good. Okay, one more time in the top view. Extend those up and down just a bit. And then the side one here, again, I can go up. Let's line it up with the one next to it. Looks nice and clean. And then the side one, I'll extend out just a bit. I don't want to touch the side of that. Take this one just one more time out a little bit. And we're good. So those are all our center marks and center lines. And now let's go ahead and dimension. All right, so I'll come up here to my dimension tool. And I want to think about what dimensions we need here. So um, I'll start, I guess I could start in the top view. From here to here. And my dimension says 1.50, but we'd like to have two significant values there. So if I come down to the bottom, annotation settings, and I can look here, it says font, text height, format, decimal, precision. Now it says that it will go to decimal places, but display trailing zeros. There we go, looks good. Let's put a few more dimensions in. And also go ahead, I'll do the depth here as well. Okay, so there's three dimensions. I'm gonna put the other dimensions down here because I can see the circle and I can see the arc very clearly. So I've already located the center of this circle, so I don't need to put this in again, I don't necessarily need to put that one in. Give my overall. And we'll put you here on the side. From here to here to give my thickness. Here to my center point. Now, I'm not going to go from here to the top because I have a curved surface. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click on my radius and I'm all set. The radius gives me this arc, which gives me the overall height. So three plus 1.62 will give me the overall height. Now let's see, I have my depth, location of this circle, location of this circle. I have the thickness of the front view as well as the height up to the top. And I can go all the way across to seven. The 1.62 will tell me where the center point is. And I think I'm pretty good. The only other dimension I need to put in is my counter bore, okay? So let's see if we can play around and figure out how to do this. I have two circles. Okay, should I point at the first one or the second one? All right, so that's the first thing we want to take a look at. In the book, it points to the outside circle. Okay, points to the outside circle. 
All right, we can point to the inside one as well. All right, I'm going to point to the inside one, drag this out, and it's only giving me one dimension. All right, I'm not going to grab the two and bring it over. I'm going to update this and change this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to double click on this. All right, if I can here. There we go. Let's try one more time. There we go. Now, when I double click on it, it gives me a pop up menu. And you notice that there's some greater than and less than signs. And it says circle with a slash 1.50. Okay. And we're going to use the new method for uh, dimension Seabor. So we're going to use some of their symbols. So 1.50 is a small circle. Okay. Inside, right after the zero, I'm going to hit the, oh, enter didn't work. So we got to try this again. Okay, try one more time. It's been a little tricky on me here. Interesting. All right, just gotta play around. I guess it's uh, not working exactly the way I want it right now. All right, 1.50, hold down shift, hit enter. There we go, hold down shift and hit enter. And the next thing I'd like to put in, all right, is the symbol for Seabor. If you come over here on the side, you'll see insert symbol. And then there's this square shape for Seabor. Hit the space bar. I have to move my cursor back over there. Okay. And then I need to put in the symbol for a diameter. So the circle with the slash is the diameter. And I have to put my cursor back over there, hit space. So I have my symbol for Seabor. And then I need to tell the size of the Seabor 2.00. Okay. And then I need to tell the depth. So again, I'm going to hold down shift and hit enter. I need the symbol for depth. And the symbol for depth is this flat line with the arrow pointing down. Okay, you might need to put your cursor back over there and hit space. The depth of our seabore is 0 0.50. And then again, I'm going to hit shift and enter. And then I have two of these. So I'll do capital X times two. Okay. Now, if this is a little too cluttered over here, you can always move this just a bit so it gets away. Just make sure we don't crisscross lines or crisscross dimensions, okay? Um, we could always move this dimension a little closer to the part as well. And then clean this up a little bit, put this closer here instead of on the middle part, okay? All right, so my dimensions are placed. Last thing I need to do is my title block. Depending on the version of Fusion that you have, Sometimes you'll be able to double click on the title block and fill it out. Others of you will have to click into the area and type things out. I'm going to put in a symbol. All right. Just been using our school logo. Click the lower left corner, but again, it's not fitting right. So up here I have a scale and I can take that down. I can also move the X and Y direction till it's inside that center point. Looks nice. A few other things I would change. Um, I saved it as figure 564, but the more common name for this is shaft support. And then maybe down here for drawing number, I could say figure 5-64. It's up to you. Make sure you have a logo. Make sure your title block looks nice. Enter when you're done. And then in order to submit this for class, just go up here to output PDF right here and upload that to our school uh, platform for collecting work, okay, whichever that might be this year. And that's our drawing, folks. Nice job.